What's up, my Kingdom Power Pick Me Up family? It's your girl, Kiki, also known as Pastor Kishana Emmon. If this is the first time that you're stopping by my channel, come on and join the Kingdom Power Pick Me Up family. This is where you get quick words of encouragement to just lift your spirit and bless you along your day-to-day -day journey. Amen. Um, I do honor the Lord because he's good and, you know, he's great and greatly to be praised. And with that being said, I pray that each and every one of you had an awesome Thanksgiving with family, fellowship, and that good food, y'all. I sure did. And I just thank God for the opportunity to spend time with family and fellowship with them. And it, we just had an amazing time. Also, this is the last day of the Praise Challenge. So y'all listen, if you have been on the Praise Challenge and you have been releasing the word of the Lord in your situation and trusting and believing God, keep doing it. This doesn't have to be the last day, but this was just the challenge to lift your spirit, to motivate you, to jumpstart you. We got to apply the word of God, y'all. And if we don't apply the word of God, how do we expect God to move on our behalf? He answers his word. God responds to his word. Amen. So when we walk in the word, we begin to walk by faith and not by sight. And God then can do great things in our lives. Amen. Okay. So today I just want to talk to you all about Esther. Esther. Oh, this is such a beautiful book when you read the Bible and you read about Esther. Before Esther became queen, she had to go through a process. And this word that I'm going to release to you today is for the ones that are broken. This word that I'm releasing to you today is for the ones that feel rejected. This word that I'm releasing to you today is the ones that feel pushed aside and that you are afraid to start again because you have been rejected or your ideas have been rejected or the business was rejected or the ministry was rejected, but it does not matter because the word of the Lord that I'm going to give you today is a sure word and it stands all by itself and you can count on God. Don't give up on God because he will never give up on you. He's cheering you on. He's watching over you. And one thing about God, the Bible says he watches over his word. Hallelujah. So when his word abides in you and you abide in the word of God, what is it that you cannot do? Then see, you can ask God anything in his name and he'll do it. Amen. All right. So Queen Esther, 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 Esther. Oh my goodness. She was summoned. Okay. And we know the story. And if you don't, go back and read it for yourself. But she was summoned. And when the king released, you know, the request that he needed a new queen to help him rule on the throne, um, you know, she was one of the ones that was summoned. Okay. And she came before into the palace. And this is the thing. She had to go through her process. That's what I want you to remember. No matter what you are doing for God or even in your personal life or even in your business endeavors, no matter what, you still got to go through the process. There's a process for everything, y'all. So don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Some processes are quick. Some processes are longer than others. But don't give up. We are all different. So don't even measure yourself and judge yourself by another man's victory or failures. You are unique, fearfully, and wonderfully made. And God got you covered. How do I know? Because the story of Esther even encourages us today. Out of all the beautiful women that had to go through their process as well, Esther was unique. She was favored and graced by God. She was on an assignment. She did not have a hidden agenda, neither a motive. She didn't really even know why she was there. She probably didn't even really believe that she could be the next queen. Out of all the women that was there, can you imagine? But God favored her after she gracefully went through her process. She had to go through the purifying. She had to go through the purification and sanctification process. And then she also had to become the scent and the aroma that the king needed to smell. 
Are you doing that today? Are you finding yourself in the place of God? Are you detoxing yourself from the world? Are you detoxing yourself from stuff? Are you detoxing yourself from Satan and his system and seeking the face of God and seeking God with all your heart? Because when you do that, you will find him. That's what the Bible tells us. And when you detox and get rid of the foul smell from the world and then you become cleansed, purged, and purified, then you can release a sweet-smelling aroma before God, and He will honor how you're coming before Him. All right, so I'm just slow walking a little bit. Walk with me, walk with me, walk with me. Um, so after she went through her process, y'all, um, she was chosen. The king overlooked all the beauty, all the shine, all the glitter, all the, you know, bling, bling that the women, I'm quite sure, had on, you know, and they were decked from head to toe, I'm quite sure. But Esther said, I don't need none of that, although it was, you know, awarded to her. She could have used any piece of jewelry, garment, or whatever. She just went before the king as who she was. And because she did, she found favor with God. See, some of us are trying to dress ourselves up and be somebody that we're not. Don't do that. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God made you unique. Walk in the unique anointing that God has placed on your life. You don't have to dress it up and become nothing else that nobody is. God uniquely and designed you for his purpose, his creation. He designed Esther for such a time when the people needed to be delivered. And Esther found favor to get in the palace and become the wife of the king, which she walked in her queenly authority, really didn't know how, but she used the anointing that was on her life and she used the grace that was on her life and she used the queenly anointing and authority to go before the king at an appointed time so that her people, God's people, can be set free and spared. Amen. So what is your purpose? What is your assignment? See, we're selfish because we think it's me, myself, and I, and we want everything for us to benefit us. But some things and some assignments are not even about you. Like God can bless you with a job and though you might not make as much money as you want to make and you don't even understand why they chose you, why they hired you for the job, right? But you're like, I don't even fit in. I, I'm just, uh, and it's just like, seem like all discombobulated until you meet that one that you might need to minister to, until you meet that one that, that needed to find you, amen? And you got to understand God has a purpose and a plan for your life, and he will use you if you are available. If you are a willing vessel and you empty yourself from yourself, then God can use you. Amen. Let me read this passage of scripture before I get too far ahead of myself. And that's simply coming from Acts 4, verses 10 and 11. Acts, fourth chapter, verses 10 and 11. And it reads this. It said, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before you whole. If God can't make you whole, then you just won't be whole. No matter what you go through, he can make you whole again. He can heal you everywhere you hurt, mentally, emotionally, in your heart, in your spirit. God is a healer and he can heal you if you let him. If you want to be made whole, you can be made whole because broken people can't help you be whole. But if you are whole and after you've been broken and then you become whole, then you can help somebody else be whole. Amen. But hurt people hurts people. And we don't want to operate in that place of being hurt. Rejected people reject people. You ever found yourself pushing people away and all they're trying to do genuinely is to love you or help you for real? And you, because you don't know how to receive that realness, the truth of who they are and what you need in your life, you reject them. Why? The spirit of rejection is operating in your life and you need to get rid of that. 
All right, verse 11. And it says this. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. So in other words, the very things that you reject will be the very thing that, that you need in your life. The very thing that you reject most times is the very thing or the very person that you're going to need in your life. See, the builders, while they were building, didn't understand the chief cornerstone that was right amongst them, but they rejected that stone. That was Jesus Christ. Don't reject Jesus because he is your everything. If you lost everything, he'll still be your everything. Everything to you doesn't matter. But if you got Jesus, he is your everything and he won't let you fall. He won't let you fail. He won't even fail you. And if you do fail, failure and success work hand in hand. It is working for your good. Didn't the Bible tell us the good and the bad works together? It says, and for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and though and them that are what called according to his purpose. So Queen Esther, her process, it worked for her good. Her separation, it worked for her good. Her being misunderstood, it worked for her good. Her competition, it worked for her good. So what's working for your good? You got to step back sometime and you got to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you in this. It ain't time to give up because God is not giving up on you. He's holding on to you with everything that he got. And the only way that you're going to fall is when you let his hand go. Amen. Other than that, he's holding on to you. He does not want you to perish. That's not his will. He wants you to make it. He wants you to survive. He wants you to become the best that you can be. And he has a plan for your life. He wants you to be the queen that he's called you to be for such a time that is to come. Amen. You got to trust God. He wants you to operate in your ministry. They may not understand. It's not for them to understand. But if you trust God and you do it God's way, God will open the door. Didn't the Bible say he will um, open up the window of heaven, pour you out a blessing, not even room enough to receive? That's even more obedience. I know it is in Malachi and they're talking about the tithe. But if you use yourself as the tithe and you give yourself and present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, is just your reasonable service. Do you not think your obedience is going to not pay off? Your obedience will pay off. Your faith, your faith will pay off. Serving God pays off. Amen. You got to trust God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. God got your back. See, when your word, God's word, that word abides in you. When God's word abides in you, it settles in you and you release it now. You can walk it out. Hallelujah. Then guess what? You can ask what you will. It work hand in hand. That's what the scripture tells us. He said, if my words abide in you and you abide in me. So the word got to abide in you and you got to abide in God. You got to meet him halfway. You can ask what you will and it shall be done. You got to believe that. Shell is a guarantee. You don't have to question that. Shell is a guarantee. You don't have to doubt that. Don't doubt God. Don't give up. Keep going. If at first you don't succeed at a thing, get up. Get back up again. The Bible also tells us in the scripture, he said a righteous man falls down seven times, but he keeps getting back up. I need you to get back up again. Get back up. Don't give up the fight. This is your fight and you will never know how strong you are until you endure hardness as a good soldier. You will never know what you're capable of until you go through it. You got to go through it. You got to push through. You got to press. There is a blessing in the pressing, but you will never know what God has in store for you if you don't endure till the end. Hold on. Don't give up. 
Don't throw in the towel. I know that the weight of the world is on some of you. I know that frustration has set in. I know that stress has set in. I understand that sickness may have even set in. I understand that lack and loss may have even set in. Poverty and like things, it's called life. Our life is not going to be a flowery bed of ease. Hallelujah. But guess what? When you got God on your side, he will deliver. When you got God on your side he will back you when you got God on your side he just wants the glory he wants an opportunity to shine in your life that you can give him the glory and says no man hallelujah could have done this but God and there is a God in heaven hallelujah you gotta honor him you gotta worship him and know that he's God all by himself hallelujah so don't give up Defeat is not your option. Come on. If you fell down, get back up again. If you lost, get back up again. Do it again. Start again. Start over. It's okay to start over. Listen, if Jesus had gave up in his process, where would we be on today? My God. If he said, no, I'm not going all the way. I don't even know where all the way is because I have endured rejection. I came with my own and they didn't even receive me. I endured the pain. And you mean to tell me that the people of God don't want me and I'm giving my life for them? I'm shedding my blood for them and they don't want me? Oh no, Father, take me up right now. But he didn't say that at any given time. Hallelujah. He could have called his angels and they were already ready you know come on they were already ready to come release and fight against every one of the enemies that was hallelujah holding him hostage at any given time he could have been set free but he chose not to he said no it's a bitter cup hallelujah it's a bitter cup y'all Sometimes we have to go through the furnace of affliction because we've been chosen and you cannot give up. But if you just endure, if you just hold on till the end, God is going to bless you. He is the one that's going to bless you and he will show you the way that you must go. Just trust God. He that endures till the end, just endure, just hold on. He will bring it to pass. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. God got you. Even in the midst of it all, the hurt, the pain, the challenges, the being misunderstood, the rejected. I know that you're in an isolated place, but use the isolation to seek God. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. All right. Hallelujah. Don't give up. God wants to bless you. And he is going to do it, but in his timing. Don't give up. The stone that the builders rejected have become the chief cornerstone. They may be rejecting you right now, but they're going to need what's in you. Just hold on to God. Just seek God. While they're doing what they think they're big and bad enough to do, you just find yourself between the butcher and the altar and lock in on God like never before. Like a pit bull locking in on something. Then you lock in on the word of God. You lock in on prayer. And don't you give up. And don't you back down. And don't you stand down. See, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he wants to shake your faith in God. Don't let them shake your faith. I need you to stand. Having done all, stand. Endure hardness, my sisters and my brothers, as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you give up. You will never amount to anything nor accomplish anything if you give up. Listen, anything great, it comes with the price. Anything that's going to amount to greatness comes with the process of suffering. And the cup is bitter, naturally and spiritually. You, a, a, a lot of millionaires never knew. A lot of billionaires never really knew that they would become millionaires and billionaires because of what they have suffered. Hmm. When you talk to them, they'll tell you stories. After stories, but they refuse to give up. Hallelujah. Don't you give up. It's not your time to give up. It's your time to live. I shall not die, 
but live. My business shall not die, but live. My ministry shall not die, but live. My marriage shall not die, but live. My children shall not die, but live to declare the glory of the Lord. So if you just speak life over your situations, I believe God, you will grow in due season. Just don't think. All right. That's it for today, y'all. Be blessed with the love of the Lord. If this message has blessed your life, if you enjoyed it, share the video with somebody. Do me a favor, comment in the comment section below and just let me know how this blessed you. And also, like and subscribe to my channel. It will help me out so much. All right, y'all. Be encouraged. I'll be back next time. Until we meet again. Grace and peace be unto you.